Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ati Allah Ati Rasul Ulul Amri Minkum And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeez of da'eef o miskeen o zalim o jahad and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah in this holy month of Safar and the month of the cave on the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad which is the oceans of al hayat of eternity not youth that is misunderstood in English fountain of youth it's the fountain of eternity. And that Allah is describing that this eternal fountain is a hijab of knowledge and wisdom that the one whom enters into this fountain of energy and the energy of eternity and eternal light, eternal power that dresses the servant and its byproduct is of heavenly knowledges, ulum al awwaleen wa akhireen that the knowledges that are eternal, they are before time, after time and they are of a timeless reality. That while most speak on terms of time and the physical world that these are the oceans of eternity and uh, eternal realities that are addressed for the soul just the listening to them, to follow them, to live and eat and drink by them is an eternal dress upon the reality of the soul. And Surat Al-Kahf is an immensity of how to enter into that heart and the adab of accompanying one whom has been taught who attained the rahmah because Allah said, these are different category, waliun murshidun are the awliya who are guides, there are awliya who don't speak and they serve a purpose by their soul and there are those whom guide. And the one whom guides Allah then gives an adab on how to accompany those whom they attain the mercy from Allah and we describe that that is the presence, the reality, the light and the beauty of Sayyidina Muhammad And once that dresses them and blesses them by virtue of that proximity then Allah describes then they attain the knowledges. That Allah teaches their soul every reality that is necessary for them. That they have access like a yahu, their real yahu. That whatever knowledges need to come that it's downloaded into their reality and the adab of how to accompany them. And that was the dialogue between Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr And Allah wanted to show that from the great Prophets of Allah that's why the example using of the highest, highest caliber, highest reality of insan so that nobody can come and say, no with me you have to treat me differently. Because Allah said, no this is a ulazam, these are the… of the sixth great Prophets of Allah who speaks to Allah. So imagine whatever people think their connection is or whoever they think they're related to, when Allah says, when we send you to become rushed, to gather your maturity, to gather the realities and the knowledges that will perfect your character, not the, the reading of somebody else's knowledge and somebody else's life. But these are servants whom they have lived through that reality. So when Allah sends you to them to become rushed, to be pukhta, to be prepared, to be preserved, to be sort of prepared and ripened. That's not something that you can read and read out to people. This is something that you must accompany them to reach that reality and that's why then Allah gives that adab. And the, the first thing that Sayyidina Khidr begins to, to, to give to Sayyidina Musa is that you won't be able to because what little you know or what you know and the knowledge of what you know that's incomplete will cause you to be agitated. So these are a reminder every year we reach to this point and a reminder that these knowledges in this way is not something easy. 
its understandings are not something easy. And there'll be a point in which the servant reaches they become bewildered, confused by that knowledge. And that's when they think they know something and they want to talk back, they want to give a comment. It's not really a question but they actually want to make statements because the mind is not capable of submitting because the heart has no problem with anything. The heart is in taslim to Allah but the mind is the problem. So then that's the warning of why we read these surahs on this journey and then why the shaykh has to reiterate that we're at this point the journey is beginning. This is now the cave of Prophet ﷺ's heart, Maudid is opening which boom the lights of this reality open. And those whom in the cave their hearts should become open. If they heard this and they're coming with us into the milad means then this is the opening of that birth of that light of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad within their heart. So then that school is all just manners that you're going to have a difficult time on whatever you think you know on a specific subject and then that is going to be tested. And the, the knowledges that they convey may differ from person's understanding and that's why Sayyidina Khidr is then warning you, mm, it's going to be rough because you're going to keep challenging on these knowledges. If that's rough for Sayyidina Musa salam, then 99% of all other humanity is, is impossible for them. And that's why tariqah has many people come and many people go. They reach a point in which it's too much for them and they think they have a knowledge, they think they have an understanding and they haven't even seen anything. These are people whom their heart's not even open and hasn't opened, they think they see something, they think they have imaginations and, and uh, different things. And yet they, that's when they have conflict because the conflict is in their head. Conflict's not in the heart because those whom their hearts are open they merely stay quiet and their heart is their guide and the illumination that enters from their heart is teaching them these realities. It's the mind that is conflicting in this journey. And that's why they teach then La ilaha, la ilaha illallah that put la on your head as in negate your head. Ilaha illallah and open the power and illuminate with Allah's Divinely lights into the heart. So up, right, left so that illallah into the heart. And as much as the servant can close down their head and not think, and say that these knowledges I have nothing of its understandings and just I'm coming to illuminate my heart. And that's the term when they teach to empty your cup. As much as we live a life of emptying the cup Allah is continuously filling it with Divine grace and Divine rahmah. And that each knowledge that we think we know we admit to Allah we know nothing and Allah again fills the cup with more. That's how the shaykh is always talking about a reality but even from a deeper level and a deeper level and a deeper level because he's continuously been trained that to go to Allah's presence and say, I know nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I know nothing of it and then the illumination comes and it goes deeper into that reality, deeper into that understanding. The immensity of, of the testing and the tariqah that when Sayyidina Khidr agreed to take Nabi Musa on the testing that's where the tariqah's life and the tariqah way and specifically Naqshbandiya way is based on those three principles. He took him to where the boat, he took him to the child and then he took him to the wall. And this again is a reminder at this point in our lives this point of the journey of our life, the boat. That he took him to a boat and he put a hole in the boat of a servant and the boat sunk and the servant was not able to make his rizq. And Sayyidina Musa became very upset with that and last year we described something about Sayyidina Musa That in these three testings why was Sayyidina Musa upset? And why was he communicating back to show his, his 
his level of discomfort with Sayyidina, Sayyidina Khidr salam and said, because Sayyidina Khidr wasn't seen. And that opened the reality of social media. Means that because Sayyidina Khidr wasn't seen, when somebody broke the boat, nobody could see Sayyidina Khidr. So everyone assumed it was Nabi Musa sitting out there breaking a boat of a servant of Allah And that's when people come to judge you and you're more worried about the reaction of people versus the reaction of Allah. And that's why and that's what shaitan has built social media on. The purpose of social media is to move you based on what people are thinking. And that's what children are falling into this trap and they're under this dilemma. They're more concerned with what their friends and people will think of them because of the social stigma. So you're on a boat, nobody sees the shaykh you're with and just sees the boat becomes damaged and goes down. And then the concern is that the whole community will think, I broke this. And they'll come and say, what kind of a person and pious person are you that you broke this man's ship? So it's not that he had an issue with Allah questioning why you broke the ship, it was more because of the social dilemma of what are people going to say when they see me breaking this ship because they don't see you, they just see me in the ship breaking it. And that becomes the issue that's so dangerous in our lives right now. And that's why Surat Al-Kahf and the teaching of the tariqah comes in such a relevance in this day and age when shaitan has perfected this understanding. He's perfected on how to move people based on the social consciousness. So kids now can't function anymore, they can't think anymore, they can't, they can't do anything anymore without the concern of and people. Kids are just now being trained and bred in it and they're being raised in this understanding. People are more concerned now about what people think and the likes they'll get and the, 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 the group of friends they think they have from online services which they may not know any of them. And they perform their life now based on these likes and that's the danger and that's what Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr were showing to us as an example. One of the realities that was coming out is he had a hard time to, to submit to Allah because he was more concerned about the social issue. Because one whom doesn't care about anything and trained in Naqshbandiya they don't care about any social issue. They don't care who hates them and they don't care who likes them, they just teach. And everyone else comes to them, oh this guy he posted bad about you and now this one he posted bad about you and when you go to this person, this shaykh he talks bad about you. They don't really care because what they do is not for that one anyways, they do everything for Allah And through their training this social stigma and social pressure they should have overcome that because they know how shaitan is operating, they know what shaitan is doing with all these games and all these devices and all these, these, uh, these softwares and apps that are being developed. And that was a reality from Surat Al-Kahf, the unseen Prophet testing a Prophet and more concerned about what the society would think versus what Allah was testing him and that's the danger. So when he complained about the boat it was more about people watching that you're breaking a boat. And tariqah comes to teach that this is an immense danger and this path is based on your choices and your test in life. If you're inspired to do good because something coming in your life that you need that, you need that in your account. You need the zikrs and the actions in your account. All the people who have comments, likes and dislikes about what you're doing, they won't be there with you in your difficulty. They won't be there in your grave, 
they won't be there in any sickness you have, nothing. They have absolutely no role to play, they can't help you and they can't make it to go away. So this life of ours is based on my grave and what Allah wants from me. So then this is a big part of the testing is that not to be a servant of social media, not to be a servant and slave of trying to get people's likes and get people's comments and, and to be uh, moving towards that because that is a form of a satanic influence upon the servant. And the training that they have is they don't care who likes, don't like, who hates them, who backbites them because we're not doing anything for people. We do what we do for Allah and for Sayyidina Muhammad Who likes it, alhamdulillah, ahlan wa sahlan come join us, who doesn't like it, uh, goodbye to you. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. So. When, we're, when we live and try our best to live by that standard, we're trying to break the slavery of what shaitan is trying to do. If not, you have dreams like hooks are coming into you because shaitan is throwing out what we could give like an understanding are like hooks. So they're on a chain and he's throwing out a hook hoping that one of them hits you on grabs you by the shoulder and via that he begins to pull the servant, hold the servant, influence the servant. So these are big, big difficulties. These hooks are now very badly involved with children. So they can't eat without being at a specific place. They can't wear something without being a specific image because everybody has it, everybody took a picture of it, everybody is posting about it. And that's the danger of this life right now and this is a, is a, is a guidance from Surat Al-Kahf that how to avoid this difficulty, how to avoid these reactions and that we are trying our best to perfect our character and perfect the, the taslim and submission. And a part of that submission is that I negate my head, I follow the shaykh, follow the guidance and I don't need to go bounce around to any other shaykh. The more shaykhs I ask, see when you're under the adab of following a shaykh, your adab and your, your etiquette is not to ask a single question from anyone else. You can get as many du'as as you want, you can go sit somewhere and make a du'a and, and enjoy and, 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 and participate but the danger of it is when you begin to open your mouth to ask things and when you ask and there's too many people at in the kitchen destroy the stew, you can be tested very hard. So that each shaykh you ask is going to give a different answer and most likely each answer will be conflicting and at that time you've now entered into a danger. That's why the Surat Al-Kaf is teaching is teaching an adab that the, the one whom speaks to Allah, immensely high station, says, I'm going to follow you and I want to follow you until the knowledges that will make me to be rushed, a sign of humility and an a adab of, of etiquette that I'm going to follow. And as a result of following, I'm going to stay silent and say, okay, they said, then follow and stay silent, don't ask a question until I ask you to ask it. Means don't use your mind in this situation to con continuously find conflict and, and go ask this one and email that one and, e and, and email 20 people until you can find an answer that you like. And that becomes the difficulty again of social media, YouTube and e everyone on every corner is trying to give a guidance. So when the heart feels connected the knowledges are the proof, the reality and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad is the direction. Then when the person finds something like that then the adab of Surat Al-Kahf comes to teach them from Allah that the good student follow the way, keep your focus on your heart and try your best to follow the guidance and build the relationship with the shaykh. The shaykh that you're communicating with, the, the shaykh that you're supporting and, and participating, that you participate in every way that you can 
This is a this is a, a form of conveyance of love and the conveyance of 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 loyalty that I'm loyal to this shaykh, loyal to the teachings, loyal to the service and they feed me from the knowledge and I give my loyalty in exchange. And that's the relationship that develops and the person and the servant become rushed where they become ripened in the way of Allah and in the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. With that we pray that Allah dress us and bless us that the testings in our life will be the boat because we don't want to go into the whole thing but the boat is our sustenance. You come to tariqah, your sustenance is going to be all over the place until Prophet sees that it's being used correctly, that it's going in the direction of Allah and that your focus is correct, your focus is on your akhirah, your focus is on Allah the focus is on the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and at that time the servant is understanding that their, their sustenance is up and down by that love. If they do something wrong Prophet brings their boat down. That's how we have taqwa. So on tariqah people their taqwa is a self-imposed taqwa. They think they have got consciousness therefore they are God conscious. No tariqah they know they're God conscious because Prophet is directly lifting them up and bringing them down, lifting them up and bringing them down. You do bad and all the sustenance closes. You don't do exactly how they ask you to do things, you're not keeping your awrads, not keeping the practices, not keeping the, the focus because we en enlisted in a way towards the Divine reality and voluntarily or involuntary it doesn't matter. You could have enlisted by saying, I want to come or you've been enlisted by Allah imposing that belief within the heart of the servant. So as a result they know by the example of the boat this going up and down, up and down, up and down so that they could at every moment think and contemplate, what am I doing wrong? What, what, what actions are not pleasing to Prophet and then when they use the tafakkur, their contemplation and the boat goes back up and their life is like that. Otherwise they think they can enter into a heedlessness to every crazy thing imaginable and think that, oh nobody's saying anything it's okay. No, no they're all witnessing and this is the love that Allah has when He loves the servant he has them on a very short leash. When he does not love the servant they're on a very long leash and that's when Allah described, we let them to have a long life and make lots of money because they're going to be in lots of punishment. Their leash is very long, they're doing whatever the heck they want and Allah's dad, don't worry about it, they have something coming in store for them. When Allah loves the servant the rope is very short. They go a little bit eh, and he pushes this way and come back, come back to your senses and, and pushes it down, this love. Second is that the nafs tifted man move, the naughty self, nafs it, huh? Tifl al Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> that naughty boy is the bad nafs, that one got to be dead. So the tariqah is built on, on the energy, the teachings and the nazar of Prophet upon that bad nafs, the naughty one, the naughty boy that keep doing everything bad, everything naughty, everything you know forbidden and that one has to be slayed. So then that's why people are, are, are running, they come with ecstasy to the tariqah like a wet log, they don't feel any fire, they say, oh this is beautiful, this is great. Until they start to dry a little bit, they become a little bit dry and then they can begin to hear, feel the fire of tariqah, the energy of the tariqah and they feel the burning because the nazar, the zikrs and the talks are directed towards that naughty one. Until they can burn it enough, burn it enough, burn it enough until the naughtiness is dead within the servant and subdued. And as a result 
their parents means the reality of you, your body and your soul will flourish. But if your your third child, the child within you, your, your bad ego will destroy you, will destroy the marriage of your physicality and your soul. So your, your man, the husband is the body, the wife is the soul, the naughty boy is the nafs. So when the bad one is destroyed then Allah will perfect the character so that their body, their soul is now being perfected. Allah will send them the boy that is from Maqam al-Ihsan that comes to perfect them. Like Sayyidina Ismail begin, when you have a, a good reality and a good nafs within yourself the bad one been brought down. And Allah sends from Maqam al-Ihsan, your inner being will begin to guide you like Sayyidina Ismail guided Sayyidina Ibrahim that, don't worry Baba, you're going to be tested by Allah but you find me to be patient. His Maqam al-Ihsan gave him sakina and tranquility within his heart that stabilize yourself, don't, don't, don't get nervous, don't worry, this will pass, everything is okay. Because this is a perfection inside that Allah gave. But if you're operating from a naughty hidden inside it will destroy everything, everything. Every time something turn around you're naughty and, and doing the wrong things. And what was once a, a crystal tree of life of beauty Allah will smash it and make it to be darkened. So it means that then is the basis of tariqah training, tariqah energy, tariqah realities and then the wall and this is our whole life is khidmat. That to, to live a life in which you only serve yourself, you have patience, you make millions of dollars and you serve yourself is a wasted life. A life without khidmat, a life without service is, is a life without any value. And that's what Sayyidina Khidr was trying to teach Sayyidina Musa is that, look we build the wall, they Allah wanted them to treat us bad because we're not building it to make them happy. We're not building it for money from these people, we're building this as a khidmat for Sayyidina Muhammad because he left the trust for these children. And as a result we will build it and safeguard their trust. And that's the reality we have within ourselves. The shaykhs are, are building us, perfecting us because we have a trust, we have an amanat, we have a reality and a knowledge that Allah has deposited within our reality. And our role is to reach it un and until we become rushed and mature and that we can inherit that inheritance. So then our whole life is a khidmat. So we learn in our life that uh, my life and the most uh, valuable time of my life is the time that I served. I served the Muhammadan way, I served the, the reality and I served the people. My focus more with the service to Prophet on what they want from us to be of service to the people and propagating knowledge for the sake of that service, supporting and helping people for the sake of that service and that's why then they have what they have. They have the charities, they have the store so that you can serve by participating. Let's say I go out and I make my rizq and I want to participate with them, I want to give to the charity, I want if I'm going to get something from Islamic things I'll get from this store, I want to spread the books, I want to spread links, I want to spread the articles and post them to different social media so it goes all over the world and this is a life of service. And if there's somebody that you can go and feed, you go and feed them. If there's somebody that you can help, you go to help them and this is our life. This is our life is a life of service and that brings the immense blessings. Without that and thinking that I just go and amass a fortune every day working and getting lots of pay because when you go to work and people are paying you for that, that's not a service. Although in your mind you'd love to think, oh no I'm, I'm serving the people, yeah but you're getting paid 50,000 a month, that's not service. That's making a lot of money. Service is when you get nothing from the people. When you find the orphans and you feed them, when you find the charities and you give to them, when you go out on a food drive and you go out with them and give the food to people, 
we do what we do without the rec recompense and, and getting a salary from it and getting funds from it. So this is a different understanding in life and this is a life of khidmat in which we go out and we try our best to, to be of service to Allah's creation but most important to be in service to the Muhammadan way, to be of service to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and propagating that love to people with sending out the videos, sending out YouTube, sending out the books, sending out articles so that people come to guidance. And there are then many hadiths on the spreading of knowledge that the one whom seeks knowledge and distributes and dispenses that knowledge, they say that all the angels in creation pray and praise upon that servant. All the way to the fishes within the sea, everything Allah created they pray upon the servant whom is seeking knowledge and teaching knowledges of the Divine. The immensity of is something that can't be understood, the one whom seeks knowledges it's the highest level. The one whom teaches knowledges and seeks knowledge say all of Allah's creation is praising upon that servant. And that's why we have many the Farsi nasheeds, I think some of the Urdu nuts describe that when a servant would walk into the mountain, the mountains talk to each other that one of the knowers of Allah has entered upon my mountain. And all the animals of that mountain, all the birds of that mountain, every tree, every vein, every root of, of every tree and flower knows that a servant of Allah has entered upon its mountain. Because the interconnectivity of this creation and what Allah gave it of an existence and the, the height and the reality of those whom have and seek out the heavenly knowledges and the Muhammadan reality, Haqiqat al-Muhammadiyya is the highest of knowledges to achieve and to seek out. So when we understood all those things then we understand the, the greatness of the path and the greatness of khidmat and service to the path. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us, preserve us and keep all difficulty away. And by the blessings of awliyaullah what Allah has given to them, Abu Ahmad Saquri that Qadda Sallahu Siru that they say that the, the Muhammadan light within his reality, how it touched every corner of this universe, realities that can't be known and that he has a special gifts for the month of Safar, the month of, of power and knowledges and hikmah. And we pray that the nazar of these awliyaullah always be upon us, our families and our communities and that uh, they fill us with their love and with their guidance and fill our soul with their love and their guidance and all of the Naqshbandi golden chain, all Ahlul Bayt and Nabi all Ashab and Nabi and that Prophet nazar be upon us, our families and our community and above all of them that Allah's rida and satisfaction to dress us and bless us. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa, bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.